those pesky little bugs that fly around your head and they make a little noise maybe, they get in your way. Um, harmless gnats, harmless fruit flies, you might say. But what do you know about them? Well, if you're like me and you don't know much about these, these pests, you need the help that Jennifer Gordon can provide. Jennifer is our resident urban and medical entomologist with Bug Lessons Consulting. And Jennifer, I have to ask, is there, this might be a challenge, is there anything interesting you can share about gnats and fruit flies? Sure. Um, well, you know, before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about the term gnats and fruit flies. So there are a ton of little flies, often called gnats or fruit flies. But today, what I'm going to be talking about is specifically the tiny flies that are attracted to fermenting and rotten foods. Um, however, if the fly you're encountering is not technically a fruit fly, according to an entomologist, you know, that does not make them any less irritating, but it may mean that solving the problem requires a little bit of a different tactic. But going back to your original question, is there any interesting aspect about these flies? Well, to me, you know, like all insects, fruit flies certainly do have interesting aspects. Uh, for instance, flies are a specific group of insects and many of them serve the amazing purpose of cleaning up the environment and getting rid of dead and decaying matter such as leaves, rotting food, and even dead bodies. However, fruit flies in any tiny fly really can be super irritating. Um, you know, for instance, a, a banana falls behind the counter, you forget about it, and before you know it, you have a hundred fruit flies buzzing around your kitchen and aggravating you. Or, or maybe even worse, you know, you open a beer or a new bottle of wine, and before you know it, you have a fruit fly floating on top. Uh, hopefully they don't take too much of it. <laughs> All right, so Jennifer, uh, thanks for the uh, backgrounder and, and again, more information than I knew about when it comes to these little pests. But how do they get in besides the obvious open door or open window? Yeah, so gnats and fruit flies are in a group of insects, like I said before, called flies. So like their common name suggests, they can fly, which does make them pretty mobile. So, you know, as you said, they can get in through open doors and windows for sure, but these insects are pretty small, so they don't really need a lot of space to make it into a building. Uh, a crack at the windowsill, a tiny hole in the mesh of your window screen, you know, maybe the mesh itself is big enough that just allows the fruit flies to get in or the gap underneath a door. Um, another way though that fruit flies can get in is as eggs on fruit. So adult flies may lay eggs on the produce while it's outside, and then those eggs hatch after that produce is brought into a building. Um, you know, there's a lot of ways really that fruit flies can make it in. Yeah, I know when a fly or any flying insect gets in our house, our cat finds that a, 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 a tremendous challenge and treat. Unfortunately, a treat at times uh, when, when the fly succumbs to the cat's efforts. So good information. Now let's talk about this. How ex to what extent can the infestation become? Yeah, so fruit flies can get really big. You know, gnats and fruit flies are like any pest infestation that if they're left unchecked, they can grow and they can really grow fast. Uh, a female fruit fly can lay, you know, somewhere between 500 eggs at times. I've seen infestations in my own homes and even in some of the commercial buildings that I've worked in of thousands. You know, it seems like every time I go on vacation, I forget about some poor banana on the counter, it goes bad. So by the time I get home, I've had to deal with some pretty obnoxious fruit fly issues. All right, so you mentioned fruit, they eat fruit. Anything else that helps them survive? Yeah, absolutely. So fruit flies are some of nature's disposal crews. So they're looking for moist, decaying, fermenting, organic material and an undisturbed place to grow. So there are tons of different species and each of these species may be looking for specific foods. However, some common items in commercial facilities and buildings that may attract them are compost piles, food waste that's been left in trash cans for too long. You know, maybe it's underneath the trash bag and you can't see it. Um, open alcohol containers, you know, alcohol can be a very fun treat for people, but it is just the result of fermentation. So the alcohol itself is a pretty good attractant for fruit flies. The same goes for vinegar. So really any food or liquid that has been allowed to go bad can become a source of fruit flies. I think the natural thing, Jennifer, is when you have them, you're going to grab your can of pesticide and start spraying everything. Probably not good for our air quality if we do that. So tell us, uh, 
as a professional, how do you get rid of these insects? Yeah. So the really good thing about fruit flies is they can often be taken care of through very thorough cleaning. And then of course, after cleaning preventative steps to, to make sure they stay out and stop them from getting out of control again. So the first thing that you want to do is you need to find the source of them. You know, sometimes this can be pretty obvious. It can be some food that's been left out on the counter or allowed to go bad in the fridge. But sometimes it is often a long forgotten source. You know, think about that banana behind the counter or maybe it's liquid that's spilled into the bottom of that trash can and you can't easily see it because it's, you know, it's too low or it's hidden behind a garbage bag. Um, other times it can be far more challenging to find the source of flies, such as those that are living in biofilms found in drain or in a mop head that's gone sour. Finding the source of flies can take a bit of detective work to figure out where they're coming from. However, once the source has been found, cleaning the area thoroughly is going to be incredibly important. You need to remove all of that gross waste that you can, but even left behind residues can attract fruit flies and serve as a source. I've seen fly maggots living in very shallow puddles of some really awful liquids. So removing all of that gross waste and really cleaning up is going to be important. Um, when possible, keeping food in airtight containers is always a good rule of thumb. You know, like I said, flies are pretty tiny. So even when you're cleaning up, you may not notice a few, a few adults that have been left behind. And these adult flies could possibly find new sources if all the breeding sites have not been eliminated. So keeping your food in airtight containers is going to be really important. And then even after you're done cleaning up, you may still notice a few adults, you know, kind of flying and buzzing around and bothering you. So the adult flies don't live very long, something like eight to 10 days and eliminating that breeding source should stop the infestation. However, you may have some of those remaining flies to bother you. And in those instances, what I would recommend is using an adult attractive fly trap to just capture those remaining adults that are flying around. And then like I'm always talking about, you know, after cleaning up the area and removing the source of immature flies, you want to prevent new flies from getting in. So that might mean changing the mesh size on your window screen, installing door sweeps, caulking cracks and crevices, implementing a produce washing protocol into your building. Uh, so that way you're washing the produce before it's even processed. These and similar activities will go a long way to help you prevent new infestations. Uh, hopefully these help, but if not, you can always reach out to a local pest management professional or myself and we can help you. Great details. Uh, obviously a clean and sanitary environment is once again, one of the best solutions. Uh, let's talk, my last question is about public health. Is there any concern with gnats and fruit flies, these flying insects when it comes to public health in homes and commercial buildings? Yeah, I mean, that really is always the $100 million question. Uh, unfortunately, fruit flies may be able to spread pathogens onto clean surfaces such as E. coli or listeria, which can get people very sick, which again, highlights the importance of sanitizing um, and disinfecting those surfaces. Additionally, fruit flies may be able to make food spoil quicker by mechanically spreading different microorganisms that can cause the food to go bad faster compared to if the fries were not there. You know, these fruit flies are very irritating little creatures, but the cleaning industry can do a lot to eliminate and minimize the impacts they have on us.